As I said in the video's comments, I'm a noob and I have not set up an aquaponics system yet, but based on what I've read and heard, the diagram I included should work. I have noticed in your videos that you seem to design systems that take exit water from the fish after filters and plants both, mix it all in the same sump tank and then send that mixed water onto both plants and fish. Roughly equally with a T adapter, I believe that this would dilute the fish nutrients throughout the system instead of sending the nutrients to the plants only and returning filtered plant water to the fish. The school of aquaponics. So Chris, we have the diagram here. We've had a little discussion um, and we have a clear understanding on exactly what you're asking. Um, so we can just pretty much go over and give a quick overview of this diagram so everyone could follow along and learn because class is in session. So first we have the sump tank here um, with the fish waste. Um, matter of fact, we'll start at the fish tank. We have the fish tank here. They're going to um, come out and they're going to connect to these uh, mechanical filters and then biological filters. Come down to sump number one, which is going to have um, fish waste here, it says, and it's going to get pumped over to these grow beds. Um, and you can see over here in the same diagram, this is just an aerial view of it, a top view of it, or a side view of it, I'm sorry. Um, and then it's going to get broken down, or it's going to uh, gravity feed down to the sump tanks. You can see the same thing over here. Um, and then it's going to return back to the fish tanks, and it's going to pretty much go in that motion here. And the objective of this setup here is to have fish waste pretty much um, get filtered into the grow bed. This is the theory behind it, that the fish waste is going to come go into the sump tank and that waste water there is going to come through the grow beds get filtered out and then return fresh clean water back to the fish tank now let's go through and break this down real quick so you can get an understanding on why the objective you have um, or the outcome you are expecting doesn't justify this uh, building this type of system here so let's start with the fish tank so the fish are producing waste um, and they're producing um, pretty much two types of waste that are going to have that can uh, potentially have some type of effect um, on them um, if they remain pretty much uh, uh, inside of the fish area. And one is the solids and the other one is ammonia. So when you say fish waste here in the sump tank, um, I'm going to assume that you're not referring to solids because we have a mechanical filter there that is expected to remove those out of the, um, the system. So the only option really you have left um, is ammonia, which you did talk about further in our discussion. You referred to it as P. So as far as ammonia, we can get a quick understanding on how ammonia works in an aquaponic system. Um, so we have two types of ammonia that's present in the system. Um, we have uh, ammonia as NH3, and we have ammonium as NH4+. Ammonium, NH4+, is relatively non-toxic to the fish. So we can have high concentrations of ammonium inside of the system and no impact would happen um, on the fish. Now, ammonia is a different story. This is unionized ammonia. This is free ammonia, gaseous ammonia. This here is what is highly toxic to the fish. Now, the presence or the concentration of free ammonia inside of the system is pretty much dictated by three factors, um, pH, water temperature, and water salinity. And when you take an ammonia test, what you're doing is reading the combination of both of these together, the ammonium and the ammonia, and you're getting a total uh, combination of ammonia in the system known as tan. Now, like I said, there's three, those three factors, the pH, the um, water temperature and water salinity are going to dictate how much of that total ammonia is free unionized ammonia. So with that being said, this leads us to the kicker. Here's the kicker. This is what I need you to listen up to right here. The plants that you're expecting to filter out the water as it passes through the grow bed, they don't take up ammonia. The roots don't take up ammonia. The only way ammonia, uh, gaseous ammonia, is being uh, supplied to plants is through atmospheric deposition or um, a foliar spray and is being uh, um, uh, absorbed through the stomata. That's the only way plants are taking up gaseous ammonia, not through the roots. What they do take up is ammonium the non-toxic form of the ammonia. So passing it through the grow bed, this ammonia, the highly toxic ammonia, isn't going to accomplish anything. It's not going to accomplish anything. The, the filtration that you're expecting it, 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 it to, uh, to occur is not going to happen because plants don't take up ammonia. So that ammonia that passed through the grow bed is still going to make its way through the grow bed, 
through the nice little sump tank that is designed here, all the way back down to the second, third, fourth, however many sump tanks you have, and then it's gonna make its way right back into the fish tank, and now we're right back at square one. So it didn't matter if we did a split flow, or if we did a gravity feed, or if we fed it all the way to Jupiter and brought it right back down to Earth. It didn't matter because the ammonia, the toxic ammonia that we're worried about is still present. The plants didn't do anything for that. They didn't do anything for that. So this def that defeated the entire purpose of putting one of these systems together like this, uh, the theoretical systems that Joe or uh, uh, Richard from the aquaponic form has came up with uh, uh, because he thinks he's the mad scientist and didn't do any research. Furthermore, once you have your uh, correctly um, uh, cycled system, you shouldn't have any presence or you actually have very low presence of any type of ammonia inside of the system. You should have very little. So this wouldn't even be anything that we would even be worried about. We wouldn't worry, be worried about mixing ammonia coming back into the system because you should have very low uh, concentrations of it. We should be having nitrate inside of the system and nitrate we can have a large parts per million of nitrate and the fish are unaffected by it any of the other macro and micronutrients the fish um in, inside of in with the concentrations that we have in aquaponics they don't they're not bothered uh, the fish aren't bothered by those concentrations so any of the waste that could be brought from um any part of the system the fish are happy swimming in it it doesn't matter so it didn't matter if we just if we um if we circulate uh, circulated them through the grow beds first and then brought them back. It, that, none of that stuff mattered. None of that stuff mattered. The fish didn't ha, are not affected by it. So an, another point that I want to make is that a lot of people have this misconception that once the fish, uh, uh, the fish excrete the waste, it comes through these filters, and then it comes through the grow bed, all of a sudden the water is just all the way back at zero parts per million. That is not the, that is not the case. Plants are relatively slow at uptaking nutrients. So that's another reason why this theoretical system would not uh, uh, it would not accomplish the objective that you're looking for all those nutrients all that water that you would classify as fish waste or whatever uh, uh dirty water is still going to make its way back to the fish tank because plants are not taking it up quick enough for it to um for it to take up all the salts in the in, inside of the water and then the fish will have perfectly clean water because if if this system here worked that way we should test zero parts per million inside of the fish tank and then all the um the nutrients would be um right here before entering in the grow bed and then as they come out we should test zero parts per million again you're not going to get that with proper flow rates you're not going to get that but the moral of the story is what we're worried about the what can cause the issue with the fish the ammonia is it, it, the plants it being filtered through the plants first has is not going to do anything for the system that is the point of uh, that's the moral of the story that it's not going to do anything at all for the system because as I said ammonia free ammonia is determined off of water temperature pH and salinity not plant uptake not running it through this grow bed not bringing it up to Mars and then bringing it around the corner uh, up to the sump tank in the third fifth seventh eighth ninth sump tank none of that stuff is gonna uh, do anything for the, uh, the ammonia concentration is still gonna be right there it's going to be like, hey, you did, you did all that. You ran me through all these grow beds, but I'm still here. So if you don't adjust any of those parameters, then ammonia is still going to be there uh, present in the system. Now, you shouldn't, like I said, you should not even have any ammonia once the system is cycled all the way. You, you, we shouldn't even be worried about ammonia. Ammonia should be like the last thing on, on, on the list that we're worried about is ammonia. In a properly set up, properly stocked, properly fed system, with proper biological filtration and proper um, flow rates, we were not even worried. I, I, I'm not even worried about ammonia. I hardly even ever check ammonia. I'm not. I, that's how much uh, I'm not worried about it. So it doesn't matter if we have a split flow system or if we have the gravity fed system. All the water is going to eventually co uh, concentrate together and it's going to um, circulate that way throughout the system. Will the system work? Yes, you can get the system to work. You can get this thing to work just like this. Um, is it going to accomplish what you were expecting it to accomplish? Absolutely not. So is it worth the headache of putting all these, you know, things together and making the fancy designs? You know, that's something that you have to decide. And a lot of people make that decision on they want to be fancy versus just doing something basic. And um, you're going to achieve the same results, whether it, uh, which, whichever way you do it. So um, I'd rather avoid the headache. My opinion, personally, I'd rather avoid the headache from doing all this and just do something basic. 
So Chris, this was a great question. Um, it was a good looking design that you had put together. Um, other people have asked this question. We finally got a chance to um, answer it and uh, uh, expound on it um, and edify. So hopefully you've learned something out of this video. We're able to help you out and you're able to take some of the knowledge, put it in your bag of tricks. Um, but you know, other than that, this is just the way the game goes. This is Brooklyn St. Michael with the School of Aquaponics. Woo! <laughs>